Okay, now I'd like to give you a tour of Serial EM. So Serial EM interfaces with the Techni User Interface GUI as well as Digital Micrograph. So Serial EM has a series of menus at the top as well as boxes. And these boxes are all able to float, which means you can move them wherever you want, or dock, and then they go into a specific place. So the first box is the buffer status, and the way that Serial EM is set up is that it is a series of buffers uh, starting with A. So if I page down, I can go between the buffers. If I page up, I can go back to A. And you'll see in the buffer status that each image has information about it that you can then read about that image. The next box is called the buffer controls box. And you'll see for me, I have as many buffers as possible. The default is only A through C. And that only means that you'll have three images that scroll through. So I like to have as many as possible. What that means is that my read-in buffer will become buffer P. And I also pretty much turn off all of these boxes because I find them rather annoying more than any other reason. There are also some hotkeys associated with these buffers. So home is always buffer A. End is always your last buffer. Delete, so we can go back to home. Delete is your read-in buffer. Insert is always your align to buffer. You can also look at image display controls. So we often talk about counts. That's the average of the black values and the white values. So for our camera, we prefer 8,500 counts on average. And there's some information here about how you want to deal with scale bars and zooming and things like this. Now we have microscope information. It's just a convenient place to put all the information you have about the microscope, anywhere from the magnification and the amount of image shift you have, spot size, if the vacuum on your scope is good at the moment, what your um, objective lens readout is, as well as defocus. And if the screen is down, you can see the current of the screen. In this case, 3 nanoamps. Also, you can control the tilt by tilting either up or down or going to a specific value. And then it will display it here. You can also set the increment or any kind of delay go back to zero. And then we have camera and macro controls. So here you can take various kinds of imaging. In Serial EM, if you're using room temperature imaging, then you would use the focus, trial, and record parameters. If you're using low dose, you would use the view parameter and the preview parameter. To change any of these types of imaging, you just select which kind of image you're interested in. For this example, a trial. You can choose bidding, if you would like continuous or single frame, if you would like it gain normalized, exposure time, and drift settling. Drift settling is when you want to pre-expose the sample just a little bit so that the action of the beam hitting the sample, the drift caused by that, will dissipate and then you can take your picture. So for example, record, I have a one second drift settling and exposure time of one second, which means currently that each image is actually 149 electrons per angstrom squared of dose. And we always use dual shuttering to minimize the exposure to our sample. Sometimes you may need to force a new dark reference or um, take a new dark reference every time. And then you can, for any image, you can choose the size. So you can make it a quarter, a wide quarter, a bit smaller than that, some more than that, or full size. Okay, then we have image alignment and focus. I'm just going to min minimize that so I can show you this. So here is where we have, for example, we see that our aligning buffer is O. We can autofocus just by pressing this button. We can reset the image shift because we added three micron image shift. And uh, we can deal with things where, for example, if we want to take a record image and we want to recenter our area of interest by right clicking and dragging, if we move it far enough, it will actually reset the stage as opposed to just using image shift. And so that's what this move stage for big mouse shift means. And then you can set your threshold limits 
if you so desire. This works best if you also have center image shift on tilt axis ticked. So the other boxes we have are the montage control box. So if I decide to set up a new montage, you'll see that the preview button has now moved to a montage button. And so um, that button can change depending on the kind of imaging that you do. We also have a filter control box which is if you have a GIF or an Omega filter in your microscope then you could use the GIF imaging or filtered imaging and then we have a low dose control box which has all of the low dose controls which will be covered in a different tutorial. In the menu system we have information about setting up files as well as logs. We can save our settings so that you might want a special kind of setting for a different kind of imaging and you could just reload settings and that way you don't have to change all your parameters constantly. Here we have everything to do with camera so you can also take different kinds of images and even see what your gain reference looks like or your dark reference. And you can also, this is where you take the gain reference. Under calibration, we can do all kinds of calibrations from image shift for montaging to um, dose calibrations if you don't do it during the gain reference acquisition. Um, for focusing, you can look at uh, measuring the defocus, reporting the shift and drift, which is nice because it'll tell you how much drift you have in the log window. So it tells you the average drift between shots and how many nanometers per second it's drifting. You can also set your focus target. So here we're using plastic, so we want to be slightly below focus. But if you were in cryo, you might want to change that. And you can also write macros. So you can have uh, macros that do various things. If you're interested in finding out the macro commands, you, may you can hit this question mark, press macro commands, and then you can look at the myriad of commands that are available. Under tasks, there are a lot of things that you might use here. One, you can center the beam. You can auto-center the beam. And I've showed you how to auto-center in the auto um, acquisition of tilt series. Eucentricity, um, walking up to high tilt, cooking the sample for automatic tilt series acquisition, assessing the angle range to know how high you can tilt, these kinds of things. Then you have the tilt series setup, which, and also this box called extra output. This is really nice because this is how we get the bin down record um, stack of your tilt series, but you can also save any kind of image that is acquired during your tilt series. You can do a focus series or a filter series during your tilt series. These kinds of things are quite available in Serial EM. Okay, under process, you can, let's just take a trial image here. You can do an FFT to look for drift. This is uh, where if you're doing the B axis, you can rotate the image left or right and then align the B axis to the A axis. Under navigator, you open the navigator window and then you have the ability to do all of the mapping that's in a separate video. And then you can just mess with the windows here in Serial EM and of course there's always help. So if you want to understand about STEM mode, you can always look up what STEM mode is all about.